Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Today I have got a nice little project for you. It's this zippered cosmetic pouch. You can use it for anything really. And I'm going to show you how to make this in this particular size, but I'm also going to show you how to draft your own pattern and make this bag in any size that you like. So just grab a couple of sheets of paper. I'll show you how to make this cosmetic bag and how to draft your own pattern so that you can make it in any size you like. Come along. We're just going to draft the pattern onto any type of paper you like. I've got a straight edge here and I've got a straight edge along the bottom here and we're going to need at least a 10 inch sheet of paper. So what we want to do is mark 10 inches from the bottom here up here So I've just made a mark at 10 inches there and then we're going to come out 5 inches. Now using the straight edge of our paper here I'm going to put the 5 inch measurement of my ruler onto the edge of the paper and just make sure that lines up really well and we're coming out 5 inches. I'll put the centimetre conversions on the paper shortly. We're going to make a mark at 5 inches just near the bottom and we're also going to come up five inches from the bottom. I've got the five inch mark on the straight edge of my paper and I'm coming out five inches from the side and I'm using the straight edge of the paper against the straight edge of the ruler and that'll make things nice and square. From there we're going to come out five inches across here. So the five inch line again, that's going on the straight edge of the drawn line here. And I'm just going to use any line on my ruler to make sure I've got straight edges across here. So we'll come out five inches. And from there, we're going to match this point here up with this point here. And that will form the basis of our pattern. So it's just a 45 degree line like that and this is now the pattern for our entire bag we're going to create a fold here so just put a mark here to let us know that there's a fold and we'll put another one across the side here And that just reminds us that there's a fold in the fabric. So we've got five inches, five inches there, and five inches here. And we've got 10 inches here, which is about 25 and a half centimeters, and uh, about 12 and three quarters. Now you can actually adjust this pattern so you don't have to use five inches. If you wanted to make a three inch bag, you would just have three inches across here, across here and here, and you would have six inches here. So it's really just doubling or halving your figures. If you're working with centimeters, you can work on 30 centimeters across here and 15 centimeters in these sections here. So it's a very, very easy pattern to try and work out. You'll see that I've cut the pattern out and I've made all the markings on here in centimetres and inches and these are your requirements. So we're going to need a 14 inch zip or 35 centimetres, main fabric, a lining fabric and a stabiliser. So whether you want to use a wadding, a nice thick um, padded wadding or just your normal interfacing or even something like Decavoil, uh, it's up to you what you want to use in the stabiliser. I think today I'm going to use a lightweight fusible pallon. We will also need 21 inch square piece of fabric or 60 centimeters. And I do just like to write what my requirements are when I make patterns so that I know at a glance without having to do any of the guesswork later. So if I make smaller ones of these with say four inches or eight inches and four inches, then I will adjust my measurements accordingly. I have my batting, my lining piece of fabric and this is what I'm going to be using for my main fabric today. What we want is 
just to cut out a big square of fabric and fold it in half so we have the fold across here and the raw edges at the top there and then we're going to bring this fabric across again and line up the folded edges evenly we've got our single fold along this edge we've got our double fold along this edge and we've got our pattern and we're going to line our pattern up along the fold so we've pinned our pattern in place and we can just go and cut this out now along the edges the outside edges of our pattern we don't need to cut this section here so I'll go and do that now with our pattern cut out this is now how it's going to look open it out and you can see we've got the triangle cur the triangle edges along the top there coming down to the, exactly the same down at the other side so we're going to put the zip in from the angle here straight across the top and straight down on the opposite angle we'll go and cut out our batting and the main piece of fabric we want to fuse the batting onto the main piece of fabric once you've fused your batting onto the wrong side of your main piece of fabric if you're sewing to sell go and pop a label on this and the next thing we're going to do with the excess cutout that we had in this section here we've got just a 10 inch strip of fabric by 5 inches we're going to use that to make a handle to make your handle we've got our 10 by 5 inch piece of fabric fold the edge over about a quarter of an inch or 6 mil on both ends then fold the fabric in half lengthwise and then fold the raw edges in keeping the folded edges tucked under bring that together and just press the creases and then we'll take the excess batting from the side of our bag as well we'll trim that down to one and a quarter inches wide and half an inch shorter than the strip of fabric the aim is to fuse this just onto one side of the fabric there we'll fold our fabric over fold this one in as well and we can fold all the layers together and fuse that handle together in one go with the raw edges all enclosed and just a little bit of wadding on the inside we're going to go and stitch this all the way around the both long edges and the short edges I'll go and do that quickly now now I decided just to make a decorative feature of my handle just to give it some more stability as well as just make it look a little bit better as well so this will sit on the bag like this so it'll have a little handle at the top what we want to do is just fold this in half an inch and we'll just use some clips and we'll do the same for the other side just fold that under about half an inch and then we're going to place it on our bag in this section here we want to find the midpoint so we've got 10 inches across here find your midpoint which is your five inch mark here and we've got five inches between here and here so we're going to put the handle in the middle section so you want to mark two and a half inches down we've got our midpoint here just make a mark at about two and a half inches down from the top and remember this is our center point place your handle over the top of this and then just squeeze it in a bit so that you've got a little bit of a handle to grab onto when you um, carry your bag around so it's up to you how big of a handle you want to have as long as you bring this in the center so I've got the center of my handle here over the center there and I think I'll be happy with that around about there so there's the space for my handle where you've got that folded over at half an inch we're just going to stitch that down come across down across again and come back up and if you want to do a cross on there you can and we'll do the same on the opposite side back stitch at the top end and if you like you can do a diagonal cross stitch 
So there's one side of the handle secured. You've just got a square around there or a rectangle around the um, folded edge of the handle with a cross in the center. We'll do the same for the other side. And there's our handle nicely secured. We can go and put the zip in now. What we want to do now is get an actual measurement for the placement of the zipper. If you take a tape measure and measure from the point up to this point, that's seven inches across, from there across the top, which takes me to 17 inches, and then down again on the other side, should be another seven inches, it will take me to 24 inches. So the overall length of my opening on the top of my bag is going to be 24 inches. Now we want to put a zip in, but I like to put zipper tabs in on the ends so that we don't have too much bulk at the very end of our fabric. We've got 24 inch all the way across, smaller if you're making a different size bag. And we're going to take two inches off, so we want one inch less on either side of the zip. So we actually only want to have a 22 inch zip all the way around. Now I'm using a number five zip here. So I'm using a continuous zipper. It doesn't matter what kind of zip you use. If you want to use a normal regular dress zip or a number three zip, you go ahead and do that. If your zip has already got sliders on it and you don't want to take them off, if you don't have the confidence, don't take them off. What we need with our scrap pieces of fabric left over from cutting out the triangle section is some fabric that is the same width as a zip. So if you're using a number three, you can cut your fabric a little bit narrower. If you're using a number five, cut your fabric the same width as a zip. From my leftover scrap pieces of fabric, I've just cut two pieces at one and a quarter inches wide, and these are about five inches long. Before we attach these to the end of the zip, we have to put our sliders on. To put your sliders on, I'm going to use two for this project today. Open it out just a little bit and take the curved end facing toward you and just pop it on over the edge, pop the other side on as well. Put your fingers on either side and hold it down and just push and that's popped your slider on. Then we'll go to the opposite end, open it out again Pop the curved end facing toward you, over the edge, hold it down and push your sliders together. So you've now got two sliders on here that will open the bag up from the center or from the sides if you want to. But it's important to make sure when you put your sliders on that you actually put the curved edges facing each other. So when you put them on, you need to put them on from opposite ends. Now we can go and close the end of our zippers. Take your zip with your fabric. This is the right side and the wrong side. And we've got our zipper facing up. Fold this in half. These tabs are actually going to be too long, but that's fine. We can trim them off later. So we've got the right sides folded together. Place that over the end of your zip here and we can clip that in place and we're going to take this to the machine and stitch across here. Once we've done that, we'll open this out. Then you've got your zipper tabs facing the right way up, no seams showing and the raw edges will be taken up in the seam later on. We'll do the same for the other end. Fold your fabric in half right sides together, place it over the end of your zip and we'll just stitch that closed. So I'll just quickly go and do that for both ends of my zip. All I've done here is just stitch straight across. We can open that out and our zipper's completely enclosed on both sides. So there's no rough bits sticking out and we've got the same at the other end. And as I've said, these are going to be a little bit big, but that's fine. We can trim them off later. Find the center point of your zip now. So just bring the edges together and matching it up from where you've stitched your tabs, find the center and you can make a tiny little nick in the edge of your zip. Do the same for the other side. All I've done is taken out a small section of the zip so that I can see where the center is. And we'll place that now onto our fabric. Now we can fold our main piece of fabric together 
make sure your points match now match this up to your fabric not your wadding because the wadding sometimes can distort a little bit take a little nick out at the very top or just put a pin in the center there and you can see just there I've marked a small nick in the fabric so we want the zipper teeth faced down and we're going to line up the notches along the top edge of our fabric and our zip. Pin or clip it in place all the way along the top and down the side. Now where the fabric ends on the straight edge here, we're going to just make a little nick in the zipper here so that we can actually turn it and repeat for the other side and when we get to the end just make sure that both sides of your zipper tab are actually facing out so there's one side of our zip pinned to the main body of our fabric we want to do the same thing with our lining take your lining piece and place right sides together we're going to find the center first and just make a little notch just at the top there and we're going to place that over the zip so we want right sides together and starting from the center we can work our way out once you've clipped the whole zipper area in place for with the lining and your main body we can go and stitch the zipper down and if you need to just move the zipper teeth or the sliders out of the way as you're stitching and when we've done that we're going to go and top stitch this so this one will need to be top stitched on both sides of the zip starting at one corner we're going to work all the way across to the other side now that we've finished stitching the zipper down we're just going to trim the corner just that point there it'll make it smoother as we're going around the point when you're opening and closing the bag and I've just stitched through all layers of the zip the wadding and the lining and main fabric turn it the right way around now I've gone and given this a press on both sides just to make it easier to hold it down whilst sewing so I'm going to do a top stitch now and we're going to top stitch all the layers together. And now we can go and repeat this for the other side of the zip. For the other side, we're going to do the same thing. Find the center and mark a notch. With our main fabric, we're going to place that over the top of the zipper here and we're going to match up the notch that we made earlier once you've clipped that down all the way around flip this over we've got our lining faced up and take the notched side of your lining and bring that up to the other notches and we can clip all three la three layers into place and again when you get to this point here you'll notch out the corner of the zip and so that you can actually turn it around once you've clipped everything in place here you're going to have your bag looking like this or at least that's how it's supposed to look we can go and stitch all the way around once we've done the stitching all the way around we'll turn it the right way around give it a press and then we can top stitch the other side make sure your points are lined up when we've done the stitching on this we can just trim the corners there We'll turn the bag the right way around, give it a press, and then we'll top stitch. Now the other side has been pressed and we're ready to top stitch the bag. And the best way to do that is to open your zip out all the way. So we've got our zipper tabs on the end. The sliders are not going to fall off now. And we can go and top stitch just along the edge all the way around your bag. Just hold the rest of it out of the way and make sure you stitch through all the layers. And there we have the top stitching done. All that's left now is to put the bag together on the inside 
and see how it looks. Open out the zip just so that you've got the slider just a little bit away from the edge. So we can open this all the way out and that'll make it easier for us when we're turning the bag through later. So just bring the sliders a couple of inches away from the out edge. Go into your bag and find where your wadding and your lining is and turn it inside out. We've got our zipper here and we just want to place a pin in the centre of our zipper tab. Just place a pin in the centre there and this is where we want our fabric, this side of the fabric, to come up to. Pinch these together and we'll find the centre point and we'll just place a pin in the centre here. So if you open out the bag, this boxing here, that's the centre there and we want that centre to match up with this here. And you can see where the bag points are, just there. Line it up across there. As I said, the zipper tabs are going to be a bit longer. And we've pinned that in place. And then we can go and pin this side in place up to that intersecting point. And we'll do the same for the other side. Keep your lining out of the way. So we've got the centre of our bag just there matched up with the centre of the zipper tab. The right angle here is lined up across here and across here. We want to do the same with the lining. So we'll take the lining and we'll match that up with the centre of the zipper tab and then we'll match up the corners. So on this side of our bag, we've got the main body pinned together up to the zip and the lining piece pinned together as well. What we're going to do now is sew these layers separately. So where the zipper tape ends just here, we're going to come up to within half an inch of the zipper tape here. So on the main body, start from here come up to about half an inch before the edge of the zipper tape and back stitch. Do the same thing on this side. We'll stitch about half an inch away from the zipper tape, come down and we'll back stitch. We'll do exactly the same thing for the lining. Stitch down there and we'll stitch across here. And that will leave this area unstitched, but we're actually going to do all of those layers all together in one go. So we're going to secure these individually first, then we're going to come around and do that section. We're going to do the same for the opposite side, but on the opposite side we do want to leave an opening so that we can turn our bag through. So on the lining piece of the opposite side, we'll start stitching here and just come up about an inch and then we'll do a back stitch. And at this end here, we're only going to stitch about half an inch from the zipper tab and we're going to leave this section open and we're going to use that to turn the whole bag through. Starting from one end, and I'm just stitching about half an inch from the uh, zipper tab and back stitch. Do the same for the other side. Then we'll repeat that for the lining on this side as well. Once you've stitched the sides of your bag down on both sides here, this is one side of the bag, we want to stitch the points down. So just reposition your pins or clips so that you've got all the layers together. And don't worry about this tab. And you can see where we've finished sewing just here and just here. We can start sewing, we can actually put all layers together and we'll start stitching from here across to the point and then come down and stitch down here and that will enclose all those layers together and by having a zipper tab on here instead of the zip you're not actually going over any bulky zipper areas and you're not going to break your needles this way so we can stitch 
all of those layers down in one go. Just check that you've got all the layers together and I do like to reinforce the area where the point is. Manipulate your fabric so that you don't have any pleats that you're going to be sewing over. And make sure you've enclosed all sides. We can trim the zipper tab off now and just square that up. Now we can go and do the other side of the bag. Remember on the other side we want to leave an opening in the lining. So we're going to repeat the same process but we're going to leave a small opening in the lining here so that we can turn the bag through. The last corner here I'm just going to sew up about an inch and stop there, leave that opening and start again about an inch or so from the zipper edge. So there's my opening there to turn the bag through. Okay, let's see if we can turn this jumbled mess into a bag. Find the opening and we'll turn it all the right way around. When you're happy with this, then you can just find your opening here and you can either just top stitch that down or stitch it down by hand. I'll just do that by machine now. There's our finished product. One cute little, well it's not so little, uh, cosmetic bag. You can use this for anything. You can use this for your crafts. So it's got the double zipper in there. And we can just open that out. We can say, hello viewers. <laughs> open that out. And you can store all sorts of junk in here. So you can go and put all your rotary cutters in there. You can put your pens in there. I don't know what's in there, but we can put it in there anyway. And we can just get a whole lot of stuff in this bag. So this is the five inch bag or the 10 inch long side and the five inch short sides. And if you wanted to make this as a larger bag or a smaller bag, all you've got to do is make sure you have one long side and whatever that long side is, you've got half that long side measurement on all of your other edges. This one's a four inch, so it's only one inch smaller, but it's going to be quite a, a substantially smaller bag when you finished. So to do the four inch bag, you've got eight inches, four inches, four inches up across and across here, and you just meet that diagonal line. And you can do the same with a two inch and you know a 12 inch if you want to. I really hope you've enjoyed this project and learning how to make your own pattern. So with this particular one, I did a five inch pattern, which is what I've shown you how to do in your video. This one here is a little bit smaller. It looks quite a lot smaller. It's a four inch, so it's just one size down from this. So you just go from the five inch directions that I've given you here, the five and the 10 inch instructions, and make it four inches on the sides here and eight inches there. So it's really, really easy maths to try and work this out. As long as you've got this long straight edge, whatever that is, it's going to be half that amount on all of the other edges except for the diagonal. So it is a very, very simple pattern to draft for yourself. This particular bag I made using just a lightweight iron-on pallet. And you can see that it's actually quite soft. So I think the bag needs a lot more structure than what it does. But if you want a soft bag, it's fine. You can go and use a thicker pallet as well, and that'll give you more body as well. But the other day I did a video and I showed you the difference between Decovoil or Paltex, which is a really stiff, fusible uh, interfacing, compared to your lightweight waddings. I think I would have preferred to have, for this size bag, I think I'd prefer to have something with a little bit more structure to it. So if you want to make this bag and you want more structure to it, go and use Paltex or Decovoil, something a lot stiffer than what I've gone and used in here. If I had have used a normal dressmaker's interfacing, this bag would just completely collapse. But regardless, it's a really nice bag pattern to make having the double zipper at the top just means that you can get in 
and really open it out easily and you can spread all your cosmetics all your brushes all your craft work all out and you can see everything at a glance so it is a really good pattern uh, just you've got to be careful with the stabilizers that you use when you make these kinds of things now I have to admit I was a little bit short on stabilizers so that's why I've gone and used a lightweight palette in this I will probably make some of these to sell in the shop and I think at this size I'll probably put about a $60 price tag on it. I'm going to keep this one for myself because I don't think it's good enough to sell being too floppy. But if I go and get some more stabilizer and I use the stiffer one, I'm going to put this in the shop for about $60. But I'll get some more stabilizer, make some up, and one of these days I'll let you know how I've gone with my sales. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. I'll pop a link to this one up the top here so that you know what I'm talking about with this box uh, and the stabilizers and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.